Hi, I'm Rick Thigpen. At Public Service, we believe all citizens need to be informed about the important economic and environmental issues that affect their communities. That's why we're proud to support programming produced by the Caucus Educational Corporation. Funding for this edition of Think Tank with Steve Adubato has been provided by the Turrell Fund, supporting right from the start NJ, the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, the Russell Berry Foundation, RWJ Barnabas Health, PSENG, committed to providing safe, reliable energy now and in the future, Wells Fargo, and by New Jersey Resources. Promotional support provided by ROINJ, informing and connecting businesses in New Jersey. And by NorthJersey.com and Local IQ, part of the USA Today Network. Hi, I'm Steve Adubato. No, we are not in the studio in New Jersey or in New York. We're all the way up here in Vermont. This is Shelburne, Vermont. We're actually at this historic, iconic, beautiful location. This is Shelburne Farms in Shelburne, Vermont. We are here for a series of very important interviews. Interviews about childcare, interview about early childhood development. This is an event sponsored by the Terrell Fund, the Terrell Fund Day for Children. The theme is the importance of love in early childhood. That importance of love, that message of love about children, for children, comes from Fred Rogers. Fred Rogers and PBS debuted in 1968. 51 years later, those of us in public broadcasting still trying to talk about issues that matter to children. That's what Right From The Start and Jay is all about. So you're about to see a series of interviews from a whole range of interviews we've conducted up here in Vermont. Why Vermont? They're seen as a national model in terms of early childhood education, child care. Um, advocacy for our children. So we're up here in Shelburne, Vermont. This is right from the start, NJ, and um, this is programming you can't afford to miss. Dr. Jun Lei Li, who is a um, senior lecturer in early childhood education at Harvard Graduate School of Education, also a senior fellow at Fred Rogers Center for Early Learning and Children's Media. Good to see you, doctor. Good to see you, Stephen. The main message in your keynote today was so powerful. And it really comes from Fred Rogers. A lot of the theme is about Dr. Fred, excuse me, Fred Rogers um, and his work on PBS starting in 1968. Love and early childhood. Make the connection, doctor. I think Fred would often say that none of us grow to be who we are and grow to a place where we can serve other people without having been loved and accepted for who we are when we were young and along the way as well. And I think Fred tried to be that one of those people through television screen, but he really believed so strongly that it is important to surround children with people who can love and support them and encourage them and listen to them over time. Mm. And I think love, love not just as a feeling, but as in very concrete actions. For example? Well, I'll give you an example. So we, part of our work takes place in orphanages. Right? You know, orphanages are places where people have high workload and the work process in the orphanage is almost like an assembly line where you have to get all these children through. But we see orphanage caregivers showing love in something as mundane as a diaper change. Mm. To be able to take just a few extra seconds, right? instead of just picking up a child and go to the next one, Maybe they'll twirl their fingers just for the infant to clap some to the fingers and pull themselves up. Just a few seconds, right? And that is love. And to be able to find love in the most simple, mundane, everyday moments, whether it is in an orphanage or in a home or childcare or preschool, I think that is at the very core of what early learning is all about. Part of our Right From The Start NJ initiative focuses on the role of the media in helping to inform, educate, inspire, which is originally why PBS was created. Question, Fred Rogers used children's media in a certain way. 
talk about media today and the degree to which it does what I just described compared to what Fred had in mind. I think Fred, from the very beginning, from the 1950s, thought that television as a medium could be used for education purposes and to draw attention to what is good in life. And clearly, the media world have changed tremendously since Fred's time. But I think one of the things that Fred have often talked about is that deep and simple is far more essential than shallow and complex. Say that again. Deep and simple is far more essential than shallow and complex. Mm. And if you think about kind of the media world we have now, not, <laughs> not just for children, but for grown-ups, yes. and we can, we can see the complexity, we can see the superficial shallowness of a lot of it. And I think when Fred retired from television, he, when he was accepting, I think, the Lifetime Achievement yes. Award from the industry, he had this one call to all of those who are in the world of producing and designing media. And that call was, how do we make goodness attractive? How do we use the tools that we have, the voices and the platforms we have to make goodness attractive? And I just always think about that whenever I, I watch an interview on TV or see something coming off the phone. I just think about, does that make goodness attractive? He didn't have Twitter in mind, did he? Probably not. <laughs> Let me think of that in all seriousness. Yeah. Uh, social media, I don't want to get into, uh, open up a huge Pandora's box, but Mr. Rogers' neighborhood, they were good to each other. They were kind to each other. Um, there's not a lot of kindness. There's not a lot of love on social media. I think all of us play a part in that, right? So that it's not just the ones who send out something mean and, and, and ugly. It's the rest of the social media world that shares it or that comments it, either in agreement or disagreement. But every time we do that, mm -hmm. I think we're drawing attention to that which is ugly and mean-spirited. What does it do to our children? I think Fred often said when it comes to children, children's learning, that attitudes are caught, not taught. And so that children catch from us how we think about the world, whether we react to the world in an angry way, whether we rush to judgment when we see something that comes from the, the media, whatever that outlet is. And I think children can feel what we're feeling, except they can't quite understand it. So that I, I think Fred, and I still believe that fundamentally, is that if we embrace what is good, not only in media, but in our own neighborhoods, children will catch that from us as well. You're hopeful. I'm very hopeful. Because? Because in our work across the country, across countries, in some of the most dire, low resource, at risk settings, from urban neighborhoods to poor rural neighborhoods torn apart by the opioid crisis, to oncology units in hospitals, to group homes for youth, in every place we see ordinary people through their simple everyday acts of love, helping children and helping each other. And every time we're with people like that, we feel that the world is hopeful. If only we can bring more spotlight and attention to the goodness that's embodied in these moments. Those people are applauding in there. They might as well be applauding, applauding for Dr. Lee right now, the keynote speaker of this very important conference. Uh, the Terrell Fund, Day for Children, the importance of love in early childhood. We're actually coming to you from uh, the Coach Barn at Shelburne Farms in Vermont. Um, a whole series of conversations we're having with the folks here in Vermont who are in many ways leading the way in the nation when it comes to dealing with childhood issues or early childhood and child care issues. Dr. June Lei Lee, um, I want to thank you for being with us. You honor us by your presence. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you for using your platform and voice to draw attention to the importance of early learning. Our honor. Thank you. Thank you. To watch more Think Tank with Steve Adubato, find us online and follow us on social media. We are honored 
to be sitting with an iconic figure in, uh, in media, in the arts, and in the world of Fred Rogers, who we uh, recognize today. This is Dr. Francois Clemens, singer, actor, and he was Officer Clemens in Mr. on Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood starting in 1968. Um, tell folks, and by the way, we'll show some footage of, uh, of Officer Clemens while you're talking. Who was he and why did he matter so much, sir? Well, I was the first black person to have a steady role in children's television. Uh, Fred was a visionary, and I think he knew how important it was to have representation of all races, not just white people. So he invited me to come on the show and uh, to sing. That's what I am, I'm a singer. And uh, he thought up a role that I would do as a helper. They talk about a helper a lot. Mm -hmm. And there were some problems, some racial problems that he was trying to address in his own way. In our culture, Dr. King was very active at the time and there were some assassinations, you know, Robert Kennedy. And uh, he thought that these things needed some way of expression among young children. They, they were aware of what was going on and he was totally concerned about the, the effect it would have on children. He felt it was best for them to know that the neighborhood had people of all races and all colors. And we were friends in our private life as well as we were on television. You said he was a mentor of yours. Yes, he was my mentor in the sense that he encouraged me to continue my operatic career uh, to continue my auditions, my studying, uh, and the traveling that it involved. It was very difficult, I, I tell you very honestly. Uh, and many times I called him on the phone and he gave me encouragement. Uh, and, and you have to take language lessons and coachings and voice lessons, and it's very expensive. And I couldn't have done it had he not stuck by me the way he did. He saw to it. Times when I was discouraged, he said, no, 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 you've come too far. You've done too much, Francois. You can't stop now, so. And he was also, I say, my biggest fan. He came to hear me in New York City Opera, in Philadelphia, in Pittsburgh, in Cleveland, uh, Chicago, whenever I sang, I'd look up and there he was sitting out there in the audience. When you were Officer Clemens on that show, there's a scene in the documentary, make sure you check out the documentary on Fred Rogers. There's a scene that was shown that really struck me where Fred Rogers um, you were one of the big helpers in the neighborhood. He was washing your feet. First. Oh, I don't want him to get wet. Right. Oh, that feels great. <laughs> you know, when you're a policeman, you do an awful lot of walking. And sometimes your feet get tired. Right. That feels better already. Good. A big, important, significant scene because... Well, you know, Fred was a Presbyterian minister. He was ordained. And so he often re referred to scripture without specifically uh, mentioning Jesus or Peter or Paul or any of the particular Elijah or whatever, whoever the characters were in that particular scene that he was fashioning in a way that could relate to children. And one of the things he was showing is how people of different colors can relate to one another and how they can love each one another and care about one another and show. In fact, he wrote this song, there are many ways to say I love you. There are many ways to say I care about you. Many ways, many ways, many ways to say I love you. And the bells are accompanying me. Because it's noon here in Vermont. <laughs> how about that? And everywhere on the East Coast. <laughs> awesome. and, and by the way, the, I love that they're playing, they're, that's happening while you're singing. Yes, I think so. You're used to all kinds of things when you're performing, right? <laughs> yes, I am. You have to keep going singing, you know. So uh, he um, wrote that for me because I was uh, on the show and he wanted to show how Peter and Jesus and the, he was a Christian, but he didn't want to beat people over the head. But his, his uh, nature, his, uh, he was humble. Mm -hmm. he, was a, he believed that people who loved you served you and that this was a way to show that he loved me and he wanted people to know that was important. And it didn't matter what color I was. Oh, who? Uh, no, it did not matter at all. And so the idea of going through those motions helped people to understand the scene that we were mirroring had to do with the, the swimming pools in urban centers around America where some of the white people did not want black people in their swimming pools 
even though they were paying taxes like everybody else. And Fred Rogers, you just broke down all those barriers. And what message does it send to all those children watching? It told the children, Mr. Rogers is not a racist, he's not prejudiced, and he survived. Maybe it's okay for me to be like that too. And that message was very important. This whole theme of this conference that the Terrell Fund is putting together, Terrell Fund Day for, for our children mm -hmm. here in uh, Shelburne, Vermont. Do you think much, did you think much about when you're on Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood? And do you think a lot about now, how much do you think about now, infants and toddlers and how they are developing or not and the impact that you had on them and we need to have on them now, particularly in the media? I know it's a loaded question. Well, uh, I have to tell you that it, it goes much further sometimes than I'm aware. I'm, I've lived here for 22 years in Vermont. I love Vermont. There are wonderful people here. But as I've traveled around the country, particularly since they've done the movie, Won't You Be My Neighbor, I think it's a wonderful job that Morgan Neville did. Um, That's the Fred Rogers movie. The Fred, yeah, the Mr. Rogers movie, uh, and it's about his life and his work. I just think that's wonderful. But, and, and they've invited me to come and do guest appearances where we talk, Q&A. Uh, You're great in the film, by the way. Oh, thank you very much. I love doing it. You know, I just had two strokes, so I was surprised at how it came out so well. But a lot of it had to do with the, the direction and what he did and his, his touch. He a, has a wonderful touch. Um, but as I've traveled around America, I've been surprised at uh, the effect of the, of the people who came to see the movie two, three, and sometimes four times. Now, I've seen it about 40 times, but I, I'm in it. You know, it's a different, it's a very different approach. But I'm telling you that um, the people have come up to me, and they've been very heartfelt, very sincere, that uh, they, they need this kind of massaging in our society and encouragement. Love. And, and love. Absolutely. And I mean, I, <laughs> if, if hugs would kill you, I'd be dead. But, <laughs> but it, it's like medicine. It's been just wonderful to have that kind of a response. I'm, I'm so grateful. Well, we are grateful, uh, Dr. Clemens, that you have taken the time to be with us. Um, and there are a lot of demands on your time. You join us here in your new home. In Vermont, we're at uh, Shelburne Farms. If you look around us, there's, uh, they say it's an old barn, but it is, the barn doesn't do it justice. So we'll take some shots of it. And uh, we wish you nothing but the best. And as, as a kid in the 60s who was watching Mr. Rogers and saw you and was influenced by you, I want to say thank you for the millions who are, are watching right now who you helped. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you for inviting me very much. Thank you. To watch more Think Tank with Steve Adubato, find us online and follow us on social media. We're honored to be joined by our colleague and friend, Allie Richards, who is the chief executive officer of a great organization called Let's Grow Kids up in Vermont. How you doing? Great. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for being in Vermont. Uh, you actually came and spoke to us in Jersey a while back. Yeah. Let's make the connection, because the Terrell Fund is committed to early childhood education, excuse me, early childhood, child yeah. care, quality child care, New Jersey, Vermont, right? But a lot of folks look at what you guys, you folks are doing here in Vermont and say, they're the national model in terms of dealing with child care issues. Not perfect, mm -hmm. but really good. Describe it. Well, I appreciate that. Well, I think what it is, is we've decided that this is an incredibly important issue and we made the case, you know, why everyone should care about zero to five. Early child education, it's the ultimate level playing field. It's the way to have the biggest impact, the greatest return on investment. So it doesn't matter if you care about economic development or workforce development, health care, you know, resiliency against addictive behaviors or creating character in a kid or, you know, um, the future success and health of a child and the family and the community and the state, right? So we made our case and then we focused on it. We picked a, a one mission, high quality, affordable, early care and learning for all. We put a deadline on it, 2025, or we're marching after it. So I think it's that focus. What's and the goal? Be clear energy. again, Allie. High quality, affordable, accessible child care, early child education. It's synonymous for us by 2025. So it's different that we put a deadline on it too. When it comes to the political will, when it comes to getting elected officials, mostly state legislators, because we're talking about state budget, sure. to care about these issues, particularly involving our children, mm -hmm. how hard has that been? What, what's the sell? So, Is it what you just said? Exactly. That it's not yes. really just child care? Exactly. Because sometimes people's initial reaction is, uh, 
Childcare, not really for me. That's nice, but not exactly. my issue. Exactly. Oh, kids. Oh, sure. You know. No, no, no. <laughs> it is. It's. It's the right thing to do, and it's the smart thing to do. Make the case for the investment. It's. We know it's the best return investment. So a child's brain is formed between zero and five, and they're no longer in the home anymore. They are no longer in the home. So where are they? They need some sort of childcare. It's got to be high quality to get these sort of outcomes that we're saying. Define high and quality. Be, Make that come alive. So in other words, it has to be so a caring. You know person, who, an educator, who is making that connection with that child, uh, who is spurring that brain development in a, in a safe and healthy and happy, you know, and stimulating environment. We always say, you know, it's science. It's not rocket science, it's science. And we have the blueprint. This is what drives me crazy. We know exactly what to do. We know about decades of research showing us how good this return on investment is, how it's the ultimate level playing field, how we spend millions of dollars as a society, billions as a society. In Vermont, it's hundreds of millions of dollars um, to actually fix problems along the lifetime of a person, which don't have to even start in the first place if we give them everything they need, zero to five. So it's it's smart and it's right. Why are of all yeah. the things we we spend money for as government, you know, as programs and you know across the board, why aren't we spending money on our children? You know, we say they are our most precious resource, but. I like to see the money where our mouths are. <laughs> Show me the money. By the way, if you just tuned in or if you listened to us on the audio end, we are in fact coming to you from Vermont, uh, Shelburne Farms, mm. extraordinary place. Let's I asked Brian and the team, show some uh, exterior shots as we're talking about this to make yeah. this incredible yeah. place come alive. This is a coach barn at Shelburne Farms. It is the Terrell Fund Day for Children. The focus is on the importance of love mm. in early childhood. Mm. So let me ask you, a lot of that talk about Love Alley comes from... Um, the great Fred Rogers, mm -hmm. 1968, debuts before you were even born, mm -hmm. debuts on PBS. Love and early childhood, make the connection. Oh man, you did. It's all, it is simple, that's the thing, it's simple. Okay, what do we need? We need children to be cared for and loved, and we know how to do it. And so, you know, but what we see is, we haven't put any systems in place as a society to help this what do you mean systems in place? So in other words, you know, if we know systems that Systems are complex. They are complex, but they help you focus on the simple, the important, love. Okay, so in other words, let's look at it this way. If these kids are no longer at home, they're spending the vast majority, it's just a change we've seen. Either families have to both work or the women want to work. You know, there, there's changes and we haven't kept up with them. So where are these kids? They're, they're out of the home and we have not created a system that's funded in any way, that's supported in any way of, you know, care outside the home. So in other words then, what's happening? You're scrambling and you're creating adverse childhood experiences. Otherwise known as ACEs, exactly. adverse childhood experiences. Go exactly. Ahead. And so, well, so, by the if, way, you can hear the conference going on in the other room. A good Sorry, time. go ahead. <laughs> That's a successful conference. So, um, you know, in other words, look, we need the best, best, best people caring for our kids in any setting. We know that's what we're going to get the return on investment for. That's the love. But we ought to support them because they're not being paid anything. So child care workers. Child care workers, early childhood educators. They're getting paid on average in Vermont, let's say $12 an hour, you know, they, no benefits to speak of, no parity at all, even with a, a kindergarten teacher mm. in the school system. So how can we say, all you need to do is focus on the kid with love, which is what we know these kids need. We all know it, we know it in our hearts, you know? So if we know that we should be paying wages that actually allow people to be with our kids and care for them, you know, and not have to quit because they can literally make more money doing any other job, does including it, retail or pumping gas. Allie, does that require government action? Absolutely. Think about it like this. How do we fund this right now? Parents pay. They're That's already right. paying more than they can afford. Some are paying and a third or more of their annual income. 40% gross household income we're seeing for all sorts of low income to high income families, okay? Basically, you're paying way more than you can afford if you're on in any pay scale. But, the other way that we're funding it right now is the people providing it are not paying themselves at all because they know they can't pay families more and they love what they do and they want to care for their children. So something's got to give. There has to be a funding stream that funds this work and why not? We know it's the smartest thing to fund. You are a mom of twins. Mm -hmm. Six months, I was, as we were this, about yeah. six months old. Yeah. So we were here last year and I was pregnant, but <laughs> it was a secret. Yes. <laughs> and you said something in your, in your remarks at this Terrell Fund for Children conference that really struck me. You said you, with all the resources, the access, the contacts, the relationships you have, the expertise you have, no you, 
What? Because it doesn't matter who you are. You had a hard are, time getting childcare? Or what you know. This is, no one has childcare. No one has childcare, especially for infants. And think about two infant slots. You know, they're the top, they're the most important in the brain development. It's the most you know, important for workforce development if you're gonna go back to work. And Six we months no matters. Infant. Oh, big time, oh, big time. So, I mean, that's, that's the thing that we're talking about. I'm living it, which is, just the irony is painful. If you're and living it, what about folks who don't have your contacts, that's, relationships, expertise, experience? Got it. Think about it. I have my parents nearby, a flexible employer, resources to hire someone because I can't find childcare. You know, I, I need every single one of those supports to just, you know, be a mom and a, and a worker and work on something. You said it breaks your heart to think about those other folks. The, think about it for a second. So if I have all of that and I'm still struggling, what the heck are other Vermonters doing? What are they doing? Allie Richards is uh, the CEO of Let's Grow Kids here in Vermont. We in New Jersey, with our initiative right from the start, NJ, both initiatives funded by the Terrell Fund, um, they care deeply um, about children. Uh, let's include Nicholson also involved in this as well. That's Allie Richards. I'm Steve Adubato. We're in Vermont. Think Tank with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 30 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of Think Tank with Steve Adubato has been provided by the Turrell Fund, supporting right from the start NJ, the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, the Russell Berry Foundation, RWJ Barnabas Health, PSENG, Wells Fargo, and by New Jersey Resources. Promotional support provided by ROINJ and by NorthJersey.com and Local IQ. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. PSENG is building New Jersey's clean energy future. We're working to protect our network against extreme weather, expanding and upgrading transmission lines, and modernizing our natural gas system by installing new, more durable underground pipes. At PSENG, our goal is to make sure you have the safe, reliable energy you need to power your life now and into the future.